Hello everyone, welcome back to Shortcode. In this video I'll be teaching you how to use the args keyword and the quags keyword. By the end of this video you'll know what they mean, when they are used and how to use them. Before we get into it, if you are new here, my name is Caleb Shaw and I post awesome Python tutorials every day. So if you are interested in that, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future tutorials. Anyway, let's get right into it. So to start off, I'm just going to create a function. So I'll have define my func and then in here we'll do asterisk args and I'll explain what this means once I've finished writing the function. And then we'll do for arg in args print arg and then we'll do my func hello there, there. argument 3 and argument 4. Okay and if we just run this we can see we get hello there argument 3 argument 4. Okay so what does this asterisk args mean? Well it is used to pass an unknown number of arguments to a function. So you can think of args like a list and it is of unknown length. The asterisk at the start is the syntax to take in an arbitrary number of arguments and it's just convention to call it args and it allows us to take in more arguments than the number of previously defined arguments. I will show you this later. So args takes any number of extra arguments. Also the variable that is linked to the asterisk, i.e. the args word right here, becomes iterable which means we can iterate over it like we are doing here. So args is taking all of these arguments and we are able to iterate through args and that is what we are doing here for arg in args. And we can do this because args is iterable. Now let's have more than one parameter before args. So we'll just have arg1, comma, args. And then when we call our function, let's just have one more argument before all the others. First, and then. And then we need to print out arg1, f5, and we get first, hello, there, argument3, argument4. So arg1 is linked to first. And then args is linked to all the other arguments that come after it. And args takes in the positional arguments. As you can see, we can have formal arguments, i.e. arg1, that are defined before args, and we can print it out just like normal. Now, because args is iterable, we can also index it. So if we print out args, and then let's do like args2, and we get argument 3 because this isn't part of args because it's args1. And these are all part of args, so this is args0, args1, args2, args3, and we're printing out args2, which is argument 3. And by the way, if you are finding this tutorial helpful, be sure to drop a like on the video, it really does help me out. So that's args, now let's talk about quags. Args was like a list, and now you can think of quags as though it is a dictionary. So define... My, uh, let's define func and then star star quags for key value in quags dot items print key value func key one equals yes key two equals no and if we run it we get key one yes and key two no. So quags is used to pass a dictionary of sorts that has keys, these are the keys, and values. And it is arbitrary in length so we could have an infinite amount of keys and an infinite amount of values. And the double star indicates that it should take keyword arguments. And it's iterable as well and we just call it quags because of convention but you could call it whatever you would like. So what we are doing here when we call it we are passing keyworded arguments and these are the keys and these are the values. Then in the function we are iterating through quags.items and then when we print it we are printing out the key which is key1 and the value which is yes or key2 and no. And of course we can have formal arguments before the quags, so let's just have arg1 again. And we could have possibly first, and then if we also print out arg1 first, we get possibly key1 yes, key2 no. 
if we wanted, we could have args and quags in the same function. So I'm just going to get rid of this at the moment, and then what I'm going to do is copy and paste this little chunk of code in. So as you can see, we've got my func. It takes both args and quags, and these are the args because they are positional arguments, and these are the quags because they are keyworded arguments. So if we just run this, we get args, hello, there, quags, first, hello, second, there. So notice how args is a tuple and quags is a dictionary. And if we wanted, we could also use args and quags in a function. So I'm going to get rid of this again and I'm going to copy in another chunk of code. So I've just got a function here that multiplies three different arguments together. So a, b, and c gets multiplied and it gets returned. So we have args as a tuple and it has two, five, and six. And then we're printing the multiply function and passing in args, which is right here. We could call this my tuple and then run it and we get 60 because 2 times 5 times 6 is 60. And this asterisk right here indicates that it's going to be the args. We should just call it args for convention. With this though, you must make sure that your args tuple has as many items as required. So say we add an extra 7 on here. We get an error. Malt takes three positional arguments, but four were given because three arguments here, but four were given. So you need to watch out for that. So args is used to take in any number of positional arguments, i.e. those that have a position or order. We usually use positional arguments and quags is used to take in a number of keyword arguments, which are arguments that have a keyword and an equal sign. So that's pretty much it for args and quags. Next video we will be taking a look at decorators. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. I always reply to you guys. If you would like to support me, be sure to drop a like on the video. It really does help me out. And if this is your first time here, I do daily Python tutorials, so be sure to subscribe. That's it from me. Cheers and goodbye.